musician called Hope for Africa. So, like Churchill, I have come here as a researcher. A few months ago, Code for Africa. A few months ago, Code for Africa did a research looking at transparency and trust. So we basically investigated newsroom policies that uh, policies available in newsrooms in in Kenya. So to start off my presentation, I had actually come prepared to to uh, project the slides, but there's, there's an issue with the computer so I can't be able to do that. But I'll try to be as clear as possible as I as I walk you through what we did. So to start off, uh, I'm going to read from a recent paper written for the uh, Luther's Institute for the Study of Journalism. So it says, uh, it says that first of all, it's uh, the issue talking about is trust in about how and why a story was made, disclosing more background information, or introduce the authors creating or introduce the authors creating the journalistic content, then the audience will be more trusting. So with this in mind, we looked at uh, about 40 million. So, um, so then we, it's, it's universally acknowledged that trust in the media is falling. Uh, research by our own media council of Kenya has shown the same is happening locally. There's also research by the Reuters Institute which shows the same is happening in Kenya and uh, part of, uh, just globally, part of other African countries and globally. So it's a thing that's with us, and the industry is scrambling, is, is scrambling to know how to deal with this issue. So we looked at, so the hypothesis that we went with is, because the media, if media houses were more transparent in how they did their processes, then the public would be, would be more trustful of the content we produce. So uh, we looked at whether we should have the following, the following things. It's, it's a checklist that newsroom had at the newsroom, whether there was a, a correction page or there was a policy declaring how they make corrections. Uh, we wanted to know whether the newsroom had declared who their owners are, who their owners, their top management are, basically the people who make decisions for the news you read on a single day. We wanted to know whether they had made the ethics policy public. So if the journalists have uh, do certain things, it's, it's there a rule, a policy that affects how they do it. So we wanted to know whether they are the editorial policy, uh, whether the public could read it when they wanted, whether, it, whether there was a public facing editorial policy. And then, so a declaration of influence we surveyed. I think one was National Media Group and the other was, I think, Tuko, at least Tuko, Tuko Nation, had went out of their way to publish the editorial policy and tell the public, these are the policies that they are journalism, and this is why we are publishing them. So if you make me aware that the newsroom, the nation also has a public editor, whose job is basically just to fix the gap between the newsroom and, and the readers. Yeah, so almost all of the newsroom we have had a contact page. So you could see from the website that this is not reached them, that only one website, or only one news website on this portal, had a corrections policy. So basically telling you this is grant to prepare the so that we make mistakes, but if, if we do, this is how it us to, uh, to correct it. Yeah? And uh, we also looked at uh, artificial intelligence. We know that it's a, it's a budgeting thing in newsrooms and it's actually coming up quite a lot in discussions. And we know, and a couple of newsrooms say they already use artificial intelligence mostly to moderate comments or to uh, select which images are best to do with the stories that they're going with. But we did not see any accompanying policies. A couple of people say they are, they are developing a strategy of how to incorporate AI. So policy they said would come after. We thought that was very interesting because it links directly to what we're going to be discussing today, which is disinformation, because AI is sort of a double-edged sword in so the newsrooms today in that it will accelerate uh, the creation and spread of misinformation, but at the same way, AI technologies can help us just track misinformation, misinformation, and the, the purveyors. Yeah, so majority of respondents uh, found that uh, there are media policies, that, although there are media policies, the newsrooms are not aware of them. The, sorry, the public. The public just assume that journalists do journalism at their own discretion, so very few. Very few editors actually thought that the public were aware of 
how they are writing the story, how they are doing the stories, and why they are doing them. And this is one very interesting, especially when we asked whether the newsroom had the uh, fact checking policies, because we focused on that a lot of the attacks coming at the media were because of how they did certain reporting, maybe they fact check a certain individual. So we just thought we, we found the evidence to show that if media has got perhaps more clear to explain to the public that we're doing this fact checking, this is the reason why we're doing it, and this is how we do it, we will not fact check. This, this issue because of why, and we fact check this because of why, because every newsroom has their own internal for checking policies here, and if those are communicated to the public, then it will be better. So, I'll just flash forward to the recommendation. So, we thought that it was important that the staff should be trained on the policies available in the newsroom, where they can access them, and where they, where they apply, because in one newsroom, we found that uh, yearly. All journalists are mandated to send the fact checking the editorial policy, but very few of them actually said that they read through the policies. So it's just a thing you do mechanically sign it, it's all to the child of where and then that's done. So we also thought the media should to simplify the processes of the filing complaints or contacting the media. And we also suggested that organizations such as Kenya and should just be provided, should just develop a uh, Sorry, a best practice policy, and then share it with the, with the newsrooms. And then finally, we thought that newsrooms should, when newsrooms are adopting AI, they should do that when they have, uh, sorry, the strategy in place and policies that will guide how they're doing it. So, uh, much of the presentation will also come 